Supreme Court nominations have a history of being rough and tumble at times. Sonia Sotomayor knows all about rough and tumble. Growing up in a Puerto Rican family in the South Bronx of New York, she's had a front row seat to hardship. Her father died when she was nine. She was raised by her hardworking single mom in the poor Bronxdale housing projects. She was also diagnosed with diabetes as a child. But little Sonia found solace in books. Her mom had the only encyclopedia set in the projects. Education was very important to Sonia's mom, and so she sent Sonia here to Cardinal Spellman High School in the Bronx, about 15 minutes north of the projects. This is a Roman Catholic high school, complete with nuns and priests walking the halls, mass in the morning, an opportunity for forgiveness of sin, the whole nine yards. In the main school office here, signs of pride. Suprema, the headline reads. High school Sonia studied hard and made the most of her education. Jerry Faulkner went to school with her. She's the American dream. Start small, work hard, and success is yours. At Cardinal Spellman, Sotomayor received a heavy dose of Catholic worship and religious teaching. You had to take religion. That was part of uh, the academic program, as it still is today. There were masses at various times during the year. There was opportunities uh, to receive the sacrament of penance. So it was a very religious atmosphere. There was a, a strong religious presence, and I use that in the technical sense, that there were brothers and sisters here, and there were priests here. After Princeton and then Yale Law School, Sotomayor went from prosecutor to corporate litigator to judge, 30 years in all. She now finds herself not in the Bronxdale houses, but rather at the White House. Thank you. Being introduced as the first Hispanic woman Supreme Court nominee. This upcoming confirmation process will most likely center on the E word, empathy. The president wants that quality in a judge. It is setting up a philosophical debate. What is the role of a judge? The president, on, uh, in unusual fashion, has opened up a can of worms by uh, suggesting that his nominee will display empathy for particular party litigants. I mean, we come to believe that justice is blind. Tom Goldstein has argued 21 cases before the Supreme Court. I think that what Barack Obama was saying there is that he wants judges to understand really including from personal experience what the effect of their decisions is and so they're not cold and calculating but understand that there's a human component to the law. This is a very real and perhaps the first opportunity for America to have a genuine debate about the things that divide Democrats and Republicans and to have a, a light to shine upon the president and what he stands for. But this is a popular president and nominating an Hispanic woman puts Republicans in a bind politically. The GOP has been losing Hispanic voters at an alarming rate ever since most of them took a hard line on immigration. But Miranda, a fellow Hispanic, says the GOP shouldn't shrink away just because she's Hispanic. To not give so Sonia Sotomayor full scrutiny would be an insult. It would ghettoize her as a Latina. At the center of the full scrutiny will be comments she made during a law conference captured on YouTube. Court of Appeals is where policy is made. And I know, and I know this is on tape, and I should never say that because we don't make law, I know. Um, uh, okay. Conservatives say that type of talk is code for judicial activists, and it's at the core of their argument against her. While it may not be the perfect smoking gun, it certainly is a, a, an insight into where uh, her background truly lies. Conservative radio icon Rush Limbaugh says it goes even deeper. It's not even about empathy, folks. That's just cover. He just wants one of his own on the court to do his dirty work. She'll definitely be under the microscope to explain the comments. Descriptively, what she's saying there is in courts of appeals where there's lots of ambiguities in the law that get resolved, inevitably the judges are making policy on some level. So where is Sotomayor on some of the issues? Well, on the big one of abortion, the jury is still out due to a lack of rulings in the area. Pro-lifers don't trust her because they feel fairly certain that Obama wouldn't nominate someone who didn't fall in line with his views. White House Press Secretary Robert Gibbs hinted at that last week. He left very comfortable with uh, 
uh, her interpretation of the Constitution being similar to that of his. But pro-choicers are nervous because in the two abortion-related cases that she did rule on, she came down in favor of pro-lifers, though it wasn't on the merits as much as it was on legal precedent. You just don't have uh, a track record that's sufficiently out of the box, liberal, ideological to cause real concern. But there is one lurking intangible. Miranda says the wild card during the hearing may be Sotomayor's temperament. The best comparison is to Robert Bork, who presented himself in such a way, perhaps showing a certain amount of hubris, arrogance, uh, aggressiveness in the hearings themselves. I have a feeling that Sonia Sotomayor, from what I read, uh, will not be the mild-mannered John Roberts or Sam Alito that everyone came to love. If in the end Sotomayor is seated on the Supreme Court, many have said that it will be simply replacing the liberal David Souter with another liberal. No huge deal. But there will be ramifications. The replacement of a older liberal with a younger liberal may mean that some of the cases that Americans care about and might want to have uh, reviewed and perhaps overturned they might not see that happen in their lifetime. The stakes are indeed high as Sonia Sotomayor gets ready for her ultimate close-up. David Brody, CBN News, Washington.